into Monster Hunter World. So, for those unaware, this is a game that just came out for the next-gen consoles, PS4, Xbox One, and I had to borrow my brother's PS4 in order to play it. And, well, it's quite a bit different from previous Monster Hunter games, and while that may put some people off, let me assure you that's probably for the best. I was not satisfied with Monster Hunter 4, and so far this has just been a big breath of fresh air. So right there you got to see my Hunter card, I put that out there so I at least have a thumbnail since I'm not starting this one from the very beginning. So right here I'm just going to do a single player demonstration and I'll eventually try to upgrade my equipment and go into the multiplayer for the various missions there, the event stuff and so on. So first and foremost, if you're wondering how things are different, this is going to be directed to Monster Hunter aficionados. So, if you look here at skills, it says Scout Fly Range Up. I'll explain the Scout Fly when we get in the mission. Prior to this game, actually this is the best one to use because this is attack boost since this was in previous games. So by equipping this alone, I get the attack boost, which is like plus three attack. In the previous games, you had to equip entire sets or most of sets in order to get skills, and that complicated things a bit. I should look into better gloves, but... I'll do that later. So here you just have to equip one piece and you get the bonus, and you want to actually e equip more of these to actually cause the effect to stack. So that alone is going to make like mixing and matching your equipment quite a bit different from how it used to be, and overall I'm thinking that's probably for the best. That I don't know whether or not it's going to negatively or positively influence the grinding. That <laughs> could go either way. Um, that would be the single biggest change, I'd say, in terms of equipment. Believe it or not, that actually is a very big thing. Hey, the second thing is how the maps themselves work. So, for this one, we're going to go ahead and tackle a Baroth capture quest. That's under optional here, level 3. Landsliding the Landslide Wyvern. Wyvern. So, one of the big changes is when you first take a mission, there is quite a bit of loading time before you actually get in, so you want to usually put the quest up and then go screw around. So right here, we will go ahead and buy something to eat. So I haven't really bothered with any of these to see what all they do, but it actually tells you, which is kind of nice. So, this one gives you attack up, which is why it gives you less health. It requires two raw meat, it looks like. And then down at the bottom are the various skills. I don't know what all these do exactly. This one gives defense but no health. I'm gonna take Meat Platter. I'll go ahead and let the whole animation play out. So by eating before your meals, you get various buffs for the mission itself. And you can see our humble hero is going pretty hard into it. So now you don't have to walk over to the gate, there are multiple gates. You can hit the button on the middle of the PS3 or PS4 pad and it'll let you depart immediately. So this is single player, as a result I'm solo. This is the second area of the game and I chose this just because I need it to go forward and you get to see a capture quest which I imagine some people that are new to the series may have a little bit of difficulty with. There are some tips you can scroll through on the loading screens here. The slinger is another big change. This... yeah, I'll explain. So we have 50 minutes for our mission. Worst come to worst, I mean, you can eat here, it's just that you have a reduced menu, so keep in mind it's not going to be as potent. Spikes, my palico, feline, whatever you want to call the companion. Supply box is going to give you some mission-exclusive equipment. If you notice that symbol in the top right corner, that tells you it goes away at the end of the mission, so we don't get to keep the tranks or this easy shock trap. But they do give you a pair of trap tools, so if you know what you're doing, you can go out and make stuff. So gathering is a lot smoother, more streamlined. Like right there I grabbed the antidote herb instead of just having to sit there and actually pick away at it. You don't need to carry pickaxes. Actually, are we able to harvest anything here? We can grab the bait bug. So certain things will give you ammo for your slinger. That's this thing. 
So this one in particular causes luminescence. And then it's up to you on how thoroughly you want to gather on the various missions. I'm still fairly early in the game, so doing this is a little important. And some items will look familiar if you're familiar with the series, others not so much. Mining spot, same as usual. Earth crystals are kind of what I need at the moment. And they said there's mite seeds here. The map does tell you where to find the various things. If you look in the bottom left corner, it has everything marked for you. You would have to actually fill it out by grabbing the stuff in the first place, so be aware. Now, the reason why things glow green is because of one of the new additions to the game, which are the tracker bug things. That allows you to find certain things, assuming you have the ability to actually track it and so on. There we have the Bonabra wannabes. If you're familiar. I think they were called Bonabras or something like that. I forgot what they actually were, but... Some things are not the same as they used to be, but they do have analogs. So if you're familiar with... Ah. So I could screw around with a nest, but I do not want to bother with an Ian. So leave that nest alone. There are no loading screens. Here's some quest stuff. This will give us research points, which we can use for various things in town, upgrading the palico and so on. It's up to you on how thoroughly you want to go through all this. Gathering is much, much smoother than it used to be, though. I cannot emphasize that enough. Here we have another quest thing. I'm going to leave that where it is. And... Yeah, I did just go in a circle. So we're going to go out a different way this time. Here we go. Actually, wait a second. This is where I went. Yeah, screw it. So, unfortunately, I chose an out-of-the-way hunting area. You actually do have choices on multiple camps on which one you want to start at. That's another thing that's kind of nice, since you may be looking for something in a specific area. You may be going on a quest to try to gather, or so on. And they try to accommodate you. Overall, the entire thing has much more of an MMO-type feel. And it's not that bad. That's the Baroth. So if you're coming here for Monster Hunter 3, he has received quite a bit of a visual upgrade. By the way, grab the Thunderbugs here in case you need to make traps of your own. You can combine that with the trap tools to make thunder sh uh, shock traps. So right here we're going to greet the thing. If I can actually connect it. My weapon of choice is the Lance. It's fairly easy, high attack power, it's more defensive oriented. It's hard to screw up, that's the main thing. Now, the thing about the Baroth is its head is heavily armored. So much so that I really don't recommend trying to bother with it unless you're wielding a hammer. Right there, it's trying to encapsulate you in mud, and it did succeed on me for a bit. So we need to back off while we wait for that to break out. And I'm out of stamina. So I forgot to eat my ration stuff. So right here I got water blinded because Baroth's a jerk. Water blind makes it that your stamina doesn't recover as quickly. It's especially bad for me because blocking does use stamina. And he just laid himself out. So now since I'm using a bladed weapon, I want to aim for the tail. I was healing for my Palico, in case you're wondering. The Baroth itself has mud armor. So that makes it look durable and overall more. So here I'm trying to create distance because I ran out of stamina due to that stupid water blight. Now, for Monster Hunter 4, the whole leap attack thing does carry over. It's just he's not in position to actually do that. Okay, here we go. Giddy up! Come on, man. So, one of the most important things about Monster Hunter is knowing how to abuse the invincibility frames. So right here I'm trying to do a jumping attack because that allows you to mount the monster. That was added in Monster Hunter 4 if you're not familiar with the series. Uh, you're a 
annoying the hell out of me, Baroth. Now, you can lock the camera on them like you can in the portable version, the 3DS one. Of uh, 4, that is. There's no portable of 5. And in case you're wondering why I did eventually decide to pick this up on PS4, since generally I'm a PC gamer, I don't trust Capcom with the port. If you want to see how badly they can fumble things, just check out my Resident Evil playlists. <laughs> So right here is the mounting thing. This does cost us weapon sharpness, so... Yeah. The thing is, he's not very really good at knocking you off. I imagine later monsters will be different. Now, once you reach the actual end, you're able to draw your weapon here and do a nice little chunk of damage. My sharpness did go down. They don't give you a notification. You actually have to pay attention to the top left corner. The other thing that's also a little different is you get to see numbers that tell you how much damage you're doing that helps you realize, okay, this is a monster's weak spot, focus this, and so on. And I'm aiming for the tail because I'm trying to cut it off. Now, should you want to lance yourself? The main thing about this weapon is, since you're immobile, you need to abuse the dodge stance thing. Right there, I messed with the stickers, because... The inventory is a little awkward. The controls are a little bit different from previous games, and they did take me a little while to get used to, to be completely honest. I kept screwing up trying to do various things. Healing has also changed in this game. You have to let the item actually, like, channel, I guess that'd be the best way to describe it, in order to receive the healing benefit. These are herbivores. You can go ahead and kill them for their shells, their meat, what have you. Your call, I won't judge. And the tracker bugs will tell us where to find Baroth if we set it. So, hit the button in the middle for the map. So we'll mark him. And these are your little waypoint things. Since the game is more MMO oriented, they add in something here to actually help you find where you're trying to go. So, Scatter Nut is an exploding type of ammo, very handy for dealing with the Baroth. Grabbing some ore while I can. Keep in mind, pickaxes can't break anymore since they are not a consumable item, you just automatically have them. So, right here, we will fire one. Oh, I walked right into that. So, Baroth is able to replace his mud by burrowing. He did so, and as a result, I have to peel this all off again. If you want to get it off easily, wield a water weapon. The downside is, his mud form is weak to water, and then his normal form is weak to fire, like most of the other reptiles, I believe. So right there, he's re-encasing himself. Right there, we have a bar out of material we can grab real quick. Just hoping that might have knocked him down. You can mount bigger monsters from two spots, either the head or the um, tail. Earlier, I did a tail mount, we'll do a head one later. And I just ate a lot of damage. So, right here we need to peel out. The Palico will probably try to heal me, but he's not going to be enough. <laughs> okay, while well, he's screwing around with that, let's pop some first aid. You get to see what I mean by healing. So if you notice, I can't really run, and I have to wait for the drinking animation to finish before I actually get the full heal. If I get interrupted, I lose the item entirely. Basically, you drop it, and it's forfeit. So they give you notifications when you break various parts of him, but for most monsters, that is going to be the tail or the head. So right here, the Palico is going to heal me. I think that will also heal the monster if they get close enough, so we'll be a little careful. I'm not 100% sure on that. So right there, we got the tail. We can go ahead and collect that in a moment. You, it's very rare when you actually want to harvest that when the monster's still here, because they'll attack you and you're a sitting duck. 
So we'll grab the parashroom, and then we'll carve the tail. So that in turn gave us an actual Baroth tail. And now your weapon does more damage the sharper it is, so when it goes down you want to replace that as soon as you get the chance. And they said there was dung here. I wanted to grab it. I haven't actually been to this area yet, so now everything is mapped in. Just by harvesting at the various places it'll fill itself in, and then you can come back on your own time. So, in a capture quest, as the name implies, you're trying to capture the monster, not kill it. And that affects your overall strategy. So once again, we get a tail mount here. So you want to stop when the monster starts looping around. When you do your first one, the game actually tells you, yeah, it's a good idea to stop here. Not so fast. But after you get to that first one, then you're kind of on your own. It's still fairly easy to capture anyway, it's just there are various skills in the original games that would make it even easier. And depending on how you want to go about things, they were sometimes worth getting. Now, in case you're wondering what the difference between capture and killing is, other than the obvious part, it affects the drop rate. So, generally, the enemies will drop better stuff if you capture them. So right here, he's limping off. We can go ahead and finish him. Well, capture him, I mean. So generally for this, I like to let the monster get a head start. It lets them go into a sense of complacency and lower their guard. So right here, we'll just go ahead and sharpen, because why not? And we're going to drop a shock trap. Now, I don't know if this is like uh, earlier Monster Hunter games where you can only drop one trap or not. That I have not tested in full, and I prefer not to. So real quick, over here we have a lychee that caused you to get your stamina back a little bit more quickly. It offsets the water blight, so it's worth getting. Sleep herb. Okay, bugs, where is he? There's also a god bug there, so let's grab that. So keep in mind you can hit that toad if you want to try to paralyze stuff, but right there I wanted to be greedy. So I used the net. You don't actually get to keep it, it's not a material or anything, it's just... Hey, there you go. Extra research stuff. So right here I'm just trying to kill some time while I'm waiting for the sucker to go to sleep. Now since he is a burrower, you will find him burrowed in the mud. So you want to go right up to him and drop the trap. We can't drop it in the water, can we? Why won't it let me drop the trap? Is it just the terrain? This, I was not anticipating. Wake up! So generally you want to drop the trap on them while they're sleeping, because they don't defend themselves. A little dirty, but they... So right here we need to bait him in. And then you want to trank him in the face. There you go. So now you get to choose where you want to go back to. They'll actually return you to camp, and we're going to do that to do the other two missions real quick. And I'll show you how all that works, but in the meantime, just go ahead and collect whatever you want. I mean, we have to kill a little bit of time. Generally, this is your opportunity to try to fill in a little bit of the map. It's just I've messed with Baroth, so this area is filled in anyway. In case you're wondering, he does have a charge attack, and if you get him to charge into a rock, he'll sometimes lay himself out. So we got a Baroth shell, and they actually tell you what the various things came from. So this is just a quest completion reward. If you look underneath the cell all, you'll see the blue text that tells you quest completion, quest completion, 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 completion. You'll have to pause if you actually want to read it. And then over here they tell you, hey, you did this, so you get this. You broke the four limbs, you get a claw. You captured him, you get a shell. You captured him, you get a ridge. Got another shell and a scalp. So this is pretty hard to get, generally. 
you need a very sharp weapon or a hammer or something to break his head, and then you can actually carve this off the head. The head breaks off like the tail. Not every monster is like that, it's just it's a bar off thing. And then while we were out, our palico got us an iron ore, a monster bone, and a backlight. So we get 3,600 zenny for that, 416 research points. That was a silver crown baroth, apparently, so a fairly large one. So the SOS flare allows you to summon help if you need it. It actually will bring in players from online. You may want to use that for some of the event stuff, since it's going to be kind of difficult to do now, but... I don't know how far along other people are. Shelly attacks refers to gun lances. While I use lances, I do not use gun lances, generally. So here we are back at the camp. This is the Area 1, not the Area 11 that we started off at. And you can talk to your you quest girl. Take a bite. So she actually has that from the cook. That's something I did while the screen was loading. And you can post your quest here and just do it. So we can do a level 2, and we can do Exterminate 7 Gajau or something, I don't know. These are fish, in case you're wondering. So, sadly you do eat a loading screen, but luckily since you were in the area, I haven't actually verified this myself, it just feels faster. And then, like usual, go ahead and grab your stuff. It's one of those nice things you can do while you're low rank and high rank. It's considered bad etiquette to do, actually do that. If you start there, by all means, take it. It's just don't waste time by going all the way back to camp. So grab a fire herb. This is the first time I've actually seen Kelby. This area, I mean. So I want to try to carve one, see what all I get. Pelt. Blah. Generally, Kelby Horns are necessary to get some pretty potent healing items. That's how it was in previous games. I don't know if that, it's like that here. But anyway, to complete this, we have to find water. And what have we here? It's almost like we were here a second ago, you know? The Baroth is like right over there. But anyway, we're looking for the Gajau fish. You'll know them when you see them. Once again, if you want some points. Just go ahead and grab your net, equip it, grab that, boom. There's the lychee. At this stage of the game I can't actually farm items, so this, these are the things we're looking for in case you're wondering. Now that I think about it, in the Baroth fight, I didn't actually show you guys the counter stance thing. Oh well. You'll probably see it in future videos if I continue using lands. This is why I used in Monster Hunter 3, in case you're wondering, because I had the underwater battles. It made fighting there a lot more tolerable. It was agonizing with a lot of the other weapons. And overall, it's still a pretty solid weapon. You can't really go wrong with it, so... It's very, very simple, in case you're wondering. Your goal is to not rapidly sheath and unsheath. You actually want to stick to a monster, dodging around it, and then just keep drilling its weak spots. And eventually the damage adds up. Generally for these, you can use them as elementals, uh, stat weapons, and so on. It's just... This, in my opinion, is like the most versatile and simplistic weapon. But keep in mind, if you want to actually stun monsters for one reason or another, just to make them easier to hit or whatever, it's up to you. You need to go for melee weapons like the hunting horn, the hammer. The shield on the sword and shield can do it, but not the shield on the charge axe sort of thing. I forgot exactly what that's called. Generally, if you're going to play with friends, you really can't go wrong by having one guy pack melee. It's just, if this is your first game, I strongly, strongly discourage trying to go for the hunting horn first. 
Generally, the ranged weapons are more difficult to use, believe it or not. You may think, hey, I'll stay away from the monster and poke from a distance, but the thing is, they have less damage if you are doing that. Now, there actually are things in the game that boost your damage from a distance. The thing is, you have to actually e equip those, and you're not necessarily going to have those early. So by trying to fight the monster from a distance, you may eventually run out of time. So if you didn't notice in the top left corner, there is a clock. Most missions give you a 15 minute time limit. There are a few oddities that give you like 15. So be aware that there will be times where time is of the essence. These remind me of Deluxe and all the ones. So once you complete your mission, if you are doing an execute mission or what have you, you are able to... I don't actually know what this does. Oh, there we go. It's a trading item. Whatever that means exactly. Still very early in the game, and I can't tell you what all has changed. Uh, but as I was saying, you may run out of time. That's one of the hard parts when you're first getting into the game. So yeah, I would not recommend starting with ranged weapons. What's also a little painful is you have to pay for the bowgun ammo more often than not, so... Yeah, that's gonna put a kink in your wallet, I'm afraid. Uh, yes, I did get it in time. I should also mention if there are copyright flags regarding the music, I will be cutting that out of future installments. So we got a Gaojo skin... Or Whisker, Whisker, Armor Sphere, Thunderbug, Monster Bone, and Might Seed. So we got a quick thousand Zenny, not too much in terms of research points, and we got a new ingredient to our canteen. So there are various missions you'll get from time to time that'll increase the variety of the food you can eat. Doing those is good because you get a bigger bonus, like instead of having the meager attack S I had at the beginning of the Bara thing, you could have attack M or even attack L. And believe it or not, that will actually cut into the amount of time it takes to hunt. You can shave off minutes from your time, believe it or not. Ah, I haven't reset it yet. So that was one. And now the other thing is the bugs. So if you want to mess with the Vespoids, Bahabras, or whatever they're called. This one... Oh, they actually tell you that they're over there. I'll start over here still. So I'll go ahead and depart. In case you're wondering, the online lobbies take you up to 16 players. Four can go on a mission at one time, so... Yeah. I also have voice chat disabled, so if you ever see me playing online with people, you will not hear them speak. And I'm pretty inflexible on that, so don't really expect that to change. Anyway, this time we will go ahead and pop our easy rations. I will grab the stones, because those are handy for dealing with these bugs. One thing that sucks about not going back is my inventory has not actually been cleared out. I'm still carrying around some stuff that I don't really need. Were there actually some of those fish here? And on the topic of full inventory, there you go. So I'm going to ditch the bait bug. I already have those. You can use the flow ferns to make water ammo. This is pretty important if you are trying to do like a bowgun type thing, because any ammo you can build is money you save. I'll probably throw away the latch berries. And I can show you guys something new. So you want to rattle them. Then you can hook you can hook onto them, and they'll carry you somewhere. You can jump off early from time to time, but it's not always guaranteed, like there may not be ground underneath you and so on. I don't know where these actually take me, but it looks like they're going backwards, which is not good. <laughs> I imagine you probably need to use these to get to secret areas or something, it's just I haven't fully explored. 
take me all the way over here is not really a good thing either. Now on low rank, the missions are fairly stable, you're safe, but when you get to high rank, you will have other monsters popping up here and there. The first area has a T-Rex type thing called Ashnarath or something like that. It's annoying. Like Devil Joe type annoying if you're familiar with the series. So as for the bugs, like the various insects of previous games, when you try to hit them, they can sometimes explode into pieces, and then you don't actually get anything for killing them. That is not desirable. We'll toss the files. Now, before you used to be able to lure them in with... fire, it's just I don't see any torches anywhere in the game. There's supposed to be dung down here. The way dung works has changed from previous games. Before you just throw it at the monster and they buzz off. Now it's actually something that you have to use your little arm cannon thing on this. It still does the exact same thing, so don't worry about that. Oh. Okay. Okay, I don't... I need to create an inventory spot. I saw it here a second ago. So one thing that's actually radically different is if you can... Uh, get the components to craft something, as in, like, potion-wise, the game will automatically do that for you. You don't have to mess around with menus, trying to dodge while scroll through and stuff like that and that was kind of a problem in earlier games. Here we go. So the... someone behind me? That's really rude, dude. So we got the honey. I will go ahead and throw away... the easy ration. So the honey normally is automatically converted into mega potions. Honey plus potion makes mega potion, in case you're not familiar with the series. So right here I'm having some bad luck trying to find these Vespoids. Generally they do like dark places, so we'll go in there. Right there is a flash bug. Instead of throwing these things, you can knife them or hit them or something and then it'll produce a blinding flash. And then the various things respawn over time. You can actually see when they respawn on your map. They'll darken and gradually fill in, like an uh, actual cooldown timer from a MOBA like League or Dota or what have you. And then you're free to just go back and collect again. We got a light crystal that time. I don't really know what that is. If you want, you can actually capture the birds with your net. So where are these things? There they are. So you have a couple different ways to take them down. You can do that. Sometimes they'll leave pieces, sometimes they won't. One other thing you can do... Switch over to your capture net. I don't know if this was intended or if it's going to be nerfed, but you can use this as a source of cheap damage. And 
this is a little bit more likely to leave their bodies intact so you can carve them, I'd say. Case in point. Now, in case you're wondering, these are paralysis element, or status, whatever you want to call it. So be aware if they get too close to you, they can paralyze you. And then, if your palico is paying attention, they'll sometimes wake you up. So that's three. And then keep in mind the materials we're harvesting here you can use to make Vespoid type stuff. Let's grab this. Bitter bug. So you can capture it that way. Or. Actually, there's one here, is there? You could just literally walk up and take them if they're low enough. So where are these things? Ah, the bait bug. So I'm not actually going to take this. And in try you used to be able to actually roll through those. That's something that they took out, unfortunately. Heartbreaking, though. So by leaving, that gave these a chance to respawn. And then if you want to get their bodies, that's how you do it. There might be more on the other side. Let's go up and look. Uh, one other small thing. If you look in the top left corner, you can't see your health or stamina when you're not in combat. Uh, come on, game. You're killing me here. Dang. So right there, if they come low enough, you can't hit them that way. Like, the lance is very nice for this. But if you want to harvest their bodies in bulk, what I was trying to get at is, the single best thing you can do is make a poison weapon, ideally like a bow or bow gun or something that can use, work from a distance. You want to hit them to apply the poison, and if they die to the poison, they very frequently will leave their bodies intact. Due to the way the whole armor system works in this game with skills and stuff, I really don't care about capturing these. I think I am using one piece of their equipment, and that's enough. So that was my last shot of that. I don't know if the Bright Moss here will kill them, but we're about to find out. So the good news is we did establish where to find these. You can just hop back and forth on different sides. When you leave one, it'll probably respawn. <laughs> one point. Uh, you're killing me, game. Now, light used to attract those in earlier games. Here, it looks like they genuinely don't care. And you know what? The net actually does more damage. If it can reach. Oh yeah, one other change. Before, everything you collected was kept in one pouch. If you notice, my carves are being kept in a separate pouch from my actual consumables and stuff. That makes it a lot easier to actually harvest everything when you go out to gather or just seek out certain monsters to kill.
on, there's one left. Just grab that bitter bug. Keep in mind that the uh, Blade Master and Gunner pouches are still distinct, so. Hey. There we go. So this time I want to go back to headquarters. So I use the R3 button that will allow me to go to a different place. And I don't know what all I'm going to show you when I get back to headquarters. Uh, let's see if there's something I can actually pick up here. Unfortunately, this early in the game, I don't have access to, like, things that will give me multiple sets of a skill. I also don't have charms or anything. I don't know if there's even rusted weapons in this game, because if there is, I recommend gathering your earth crystals now. Still a lot that I'm in the dark about, but I plan to figure this out over time. I think I made it in time. Ah, no I didn't. So I will walk through the city real quick just to show you the different things. You can see how big it is. As far as I know, this is the biggest city to date that you've ever been given. And that took 12 agonizing minutes. We got a Vispoid shield, a uh, shell as a request for reward, another shell, a wing, monster fluid. Monster fluid is very, very valuable generally, so that's not a bad pickup. Get some armor spheres, some nitro shrooms, a pair of earth crystals, more shrooms, herbs, some mite seed, fire herb. The mite and adamant seeds are handy when you're actually able to farm those and make buff items that give us bullion meat. But I'm still too early in this. So there's also camouflage type things here where you can hide from monsters in case it's too tough for you. Focus body parts to break them. Breaking them gives you rewards. Dual blades. These are a very, very fast weapon. I don't use them. This is something new involving the scout flies. Eating in the canteen gives you buffs. And we miss out on the other tips. Now, since we're going back to the city, the loading screen's a little bit longer. If Head to like. the wild spar waste immediately. So to move forward with the game, I have to go do something or another, but here we have the Nothing ecology people. Stop us. If someone requests something, you have to deliver it here, like someone wanted an iron ore and an ancient bone, easy to get. Someone wanted a moss swine hide, this is from a pig. There's an area in the first map where you'll find pigs, kill one, skin it, and you get the hide. Someone wanted a mega potion. You have investigations. These I haven't actually done just yet, but you get special rewards for doing them, but you can only do them a certain number of times or something or another. I don't quite get them just yet. These are different from your normal guild missions, so I don't know, like, what's the incentive in doing these? Do they give you extra stuff, or what exactly? I want to say these are probably like the, um... Uh, I can't remember what those forest quests were called in Monster Hunter 4. Where you basically just choose this, and then you go on out and do it, and it levels up or something. Here, they kind of go down, I guess, because after a certain amount of times, they disappear. And then the bounties, this is just lists of things that give you something or another. So by Pink Praxis Capture, this is actually a fish, believe it or not. You just have to fish it out. They give you research points and some sort of print. For capturing a Terex, this you just have to catch in your net, it's a bird. Rebuild the ancient forest camp, and they give you various things. And then these are the timed events. So you have to kill three great Jagras. This is basically the Jaggy or Drome of the game. Very, very easy to kill, I've already done it. There is a time limit, if you notice it says it expires in four days. So this one's out of the way. And Janath, this is the Devil Joe-like annoyance that I talked about. You have to kill four of these? Yeah. They are nasty. I can't kill them just yet, so I have to avoid this one. For the Flying Wyverns, this is Los, Ian... I'm trying to think of who else might apply, but you have to kill five of those. And then 
you get the various rewards. And then if you do all of them, then you get the general reward. I imagine these probably will cycle like they did in previous games. So if you can't do them just yet because you just started, you don't know what you're doing, what have you, don't panic. So the guy who gave me the capture quest was this dude. Let's see what he has to say. Hello. Hunter, I must thank you for capturing the Baroth. This is a little thank you from the Go-Getters. I insist you have it. 600 points. So there's no exclamation point, so that tells you he doesn't have a new mission for us yet. This marker right here tells you that's necessary to move the storyline forward. And then go around town and talk to people. When you see exclamation points like that, you can talk to them and they'll sometimes give you an additional mission or something and it will generate rewards. So, Commander, what's up? Mm -hmm. The man you saw used to be with the First Fleet. He was the commission, or he was the commission's only hunter. It's essential to our mission here, but some time ago we lost track of the fellow. Uh, said he discovered the secret of the continent, and then mm -hmm. he's gone. I tried to go with him, wouldn't have it. You're first to have seen oh. him. Furious for leaving. Just glad he's okay. He'll Thank return you. when he's ready. So, yeah, those two missions I just did, I got from the canteen cook. We'll go up and pay a visit to him. We'll stop at the smithy, too, I guess. Since it's right here, if you want to see it. Want something making? They actually let you see the whole tree when you're trying to upgrade your equipment. So, to use my lance as an example, this started out as an Iron Lance 1 by getting some iron ore upgraded to the Iron Lance 2. You can supposedly refund these for materials. I don't know if you actually get your money back, but you supposedly get the materials, so you don't have to grind as much in this game. Just be aware there is that boon. And you can see what you're going for. Now, since I mentioned lances thrive with elements or stas effects, I am trying to build towards wherever this is, just because it's a thunder weapon. There may be a better one later on. If there is, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But for the time being, this is what I'm aiming for. Now, on the bone route, we actually could go for a water weapon. This would be like the Ludroth stuff from Try. This would be the Lugai, Chris, in case you're wondering. And I don't remember who the water monster was in 4 offhand. Basically, there's a couple different monsters of each element, and then you farm them for different things. And yeah, anyway, there are different ways to view the tree, so it's up to you if you want to see it as just a list, if you want to see it as the tree, if you want it to be a zoomed-in type tree, and they actually tell you this is the Kula Yaku, think of Yankuku, it's an avian type dragon. Pukey Pukey, or they actually pronounce it as Puke Puke, but just be aware, it pukes on you, it's the Giganox, or, well, it's technically like a bird wyvern. It's just, it's your poison element, like Giganox, or whoever it was, and Tri, I forgot exactly. Or, before, I mean. Baroth, his stuff. If you notice, it says minus 20% affinity. If you don't know what affinity is, that's crit rate. So, this has a negative crit rate. Every one out of five hits you swing at will deal less damage. That's why I do not bother with Baroth stuff. And then we have to find who the water monster is yet. As for the armor, here we have the various trees, and then if you want to see, we'll use the alloy as example. Actually, we can... So the chainmail itself doesn't actually give you anything, so I'm going to swap that out. So we will switch over to alloy, since this will give me a defense bonus, I'll be able to take a little bit more punishment. It cost me three Maclite, six iron, one earth crystal, and 500 zenny. Pretty pricey, but it'll pay for itself. The thing you have to pay attention to are the elements. If this has weakness to fire, thunder, and ice, so if you're going to catch Ian or Losa's breath, it's going to hurt. But if you can dodge it, you are golden. So yes, I will still go forward because the skills are handy. That's what always made or break broke you in these games. So you have it. You still use armor spheres to customize. Well, upgrade them. They don't really customize. And as far as I can tell, there's no slotting or anything in them, at least yet, because it looks like there is an icon for it. So, yeah, customization isn't quite here yet, but that's probably how you will actually achieve the different types of stats and stuff. So, we will go ahead and upgrade that which I just built. Cost me an armor sphere. You choose how many you want to give it to, because that determines how much it levels up. It's just... I'm not going crazy early on. 
so we'll give it one just to upgrade it. Plus me 80 Zenny, and as a result, it gives me two more defense. So if I end up taking a hit, I will be a little safer. But yeah, you can go forge different weapons. Early on, you only have the iron and the bone, but generally, other stuff unlocks as you go. So I can make the bone lance now if I want. It's just no rush. Everything in due time. You can see the required mission in the top right corner for single player. You have to do that one to go forward. I don't even know if I have to kill anything for that one or how it works. Here is the guild receptionist. You talk to her for your various missions. That was the one with us. Here's the canteen. And then you can talk to various people, but not when they say it's going to be enlightening. If you use a voucher, you get a free meal. And then you get the vouchers for various quests, missions, what have you. Oh, right, Palico. So yeah, we're going to return to the uh, forge real quick so I can show you. So I mentioned research points are pretty helpful for actually uh, upgrading your Palico. So if you want to forge Palico equipment, standard equipment out, I think it's like standard and event, I'm not entirely sure. Here you see Spike. So I can give him the PUK. This is a blunt. It actually will poison stuff. And that's... This is worth considering. Right now I have him using the Kulu loot since it has a little bit of crit rate. But this one... It's just stronger. So let's see, if I wanted to build this, it's going to cost me one of the sacks. It's a poison sack type thing that I have to pay 80 research points. Compared to, I could do the alloy. This is a severing, so he can actually cut off tails with this. This he can actually stun. It's just, don't really rely on your palico for that type of thing. Could give him the Baroth stuff. He loses affinity, but he gains defense. And he has a lot of power when he's packing this. 12 melee. It's just, it's not worth that crit debuff. So yeah, we'll give him the bow. Doesn't actually fire arrows, though. You can skip animations if you want. Oops. And then there are various equipment pieces you can forge for it. So if you have an abundance of stuff, by all means, go ahead and grab it some things. So that's four defense. I have a lot of Macalites, so I'm thinking I should just go ahead and give him this. As is, he's using the leather stuff, only gives him two defense, but he has a little bit of fire protection. He actually has no elements if I do that, so yeah. yeah I'm fine with fighting one of these if I have to. So we'll go ahead and give Spike a new set. And this is where we'll wrap up the video. So there you go, he's styling now. So once you actually do something, the thing that you have to stress most is you want to go to your house and save. This is how it always worked in the old games, I'm not 100% sure if that's how it is here, it's just I do not want to take a chance. You can always customize your room, too, based off stuff you got from quests, or trading, or however you actually did get it. So the way you actually would save, these are guys from the opening, if you actually bothered playing it. I don't know, maybe you don't need to save anymore. Pelico status. You can put them aside, but that's not really worth it. So I don't know if Rust just changes... Hmm, not sure. Housekeeper has something for us. Got some of your specimens of endemic life out in the field. If you like, we can set them loose right here in your room. Which creature you like to... Oh, so you can put them out here. <laughs> you will not be popular with roommates if you release a dung beetle. Place pets. So if you want to see the Terex, there you go. Just capture that in your net for the one woman. Here we have the gecko. Oh, so these are the things I actually did capture. So this is what you ca capture them for. So 
There's the flashlight, but we'll leave the Terex out for now. Hmm, kinda cool. Oh, so you can just save right here. So there you go, that's how you save. But anyway, that is it for now. So I'm not going to be covering the single player game, but I'll probably try to show as much multiplayer as I can. It's just, I may pop up from time to time with single player stuff if it's interesting. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not making any promises. Anyway, I'm the Hero of Light. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.